your surgery is tomorrow. Tomorrow, good. Any questions that you have that uh, you know you drove or we yes, drove. we drove. Good. Uh, on the way up here, he said when we see Dr. Rutledge, we want to ask him any questions you had on your mind and. Well, we've really read the material pretty well. You forgive um, me for the packet? <laughs> <laughs> just, just barely. Uh, yes. <laughs> just barely. I feel like I'm Frankenstein in front of the villagers with torches, you know. <laughs> That's right. How do you feel about the packet? <laughs> um, I, uh, I am having problems with a uh, uh, disc in my back. Yeah. We spoke on the phone about that and they were going to do an epidural on that, and I've decided not to do that. And um, I'm, I'm curious if that's going to affect me after the surgery. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about that. One of the uh, things we expect from the surgery is for a lot of the medical problems that each of you has to get better. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And uh, so, for example, sometimes it's embarrassing. I'll be in clinic and somebody will say, well, will my thyroid disease get better? And I have to go, no. And they might say, you know, will my brain tumor get better? Go, well, no. But there are a lot of things that we make better. And one of the things is various kinds of aches and pains that go along with osteoarthritis, with pinched nerves and things like that. Yeah. We oftentimes improve that. And so let's talk a little bit about that. Um, we hope and expect that the surgery is going to have a tremendous, powerful impact on you and your body. Now, some people think it's just the weight loss. Okay, in other words, that uh, basically this is a, um, a very effective way to get weight loss, and that's it. In other words, you may have heard or think about the idea of, oh, well, if I just had enough willpower, I wouldn't have to be seeing Dr. Rutledge in the first place. That this obesity thing is really nothing more than kind of a lack of willpower or lack of intelligence or lack of commitment or... Have you heard the psychiatric explanation, you know, mama didn't like you best, mm -hmm. and so now you eat to make yourself happy again even though mother didn't love you? Have you heard those kind of explanations? All right, all right. Sure. But this, the problem with those is if you try and use them as a method for treating obesity, they don't work very well. So, for example, we could get you together with a psychiatrist for years, and the studies show it's unlikely to make you lose weight. We could explain to you about Mama, that she really did love you. Come in. Good morning. Hello. Come in, come in. Hey. There are two more seats up front if you want to sit together. Nobody wants to sit in front. Because there's going to be major questions. That makes us nobody. <laughs> no, they knew that there weren't any other chairs. That's why you're sitting up front. <laughs> Um, can we ask your legal permission, those of you who come in late? Uh, we normally uh, have a doctor visit where you talk only privately. And today we're going to talk in this public group. And may I have your legal permission to talk in front of everyone else? Yeah. Okay, thank you. So we have these theories of obesity. One is psychiatric, you know, that there's some kind of deep-seated uh, anger or sadness or depression, and you eat for out of depression, and it makes you feel comfortable and enjoy it, so you just keep eating. And so if we could take you and psychiatrically exercise those demons, you know, get rid of the, the, the mama inside of you who's still disapproving and shaking her finger at you, then you would be all better psychiatrically and you'd stop eating. Heard that one? Sure. Yeah, it doesn't, work. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work very well. You can psychiatricize people all day long and they don't very, they don't very effectively get thin. Another thing is, you know, it's, it's, uh, you've heard this story. It's just calories in and calories out. Obesity is just common sense, right? You burn enough calories. So listen, why don't you all get out of here today? Just push yourself back from the table and take up jogging. Right? You heard that explanation? Strap yourself to a treadmill and everything. Yeah, what's the problem? What's wrong with you people? It's simple. It's obesity is simple. Okay? But using that technique as a theory doesn't work very well. So it could be that all of you and all of my patients and all the other heavy people in the world are weak-willed. Or maybe they just don't get it. Maybe you need to just be educated that uh, you're eating the wrong foods and too much of them. If I just educated you and told you salad is better, maybe you just lack that knowledge. So these are all kind of problems. They don't very, much, they don't very well fix obesity. 
But let's go back and give another theory of obesity. Let's say it's not simply lack of willpower, sadness that mama didn't like you best. Let's say instead that you and I are fixed with a very powerful hunger hormone and it tells us how much to eat. Like imagine God created, oh, good morning, come in. I think we might have a couple more chairs. We've got some fold-up spot on Yeah. Do we have enough or need yeah. another one? Yeah, you guys might have to shoot down. Welcome and good morning. Uh, can we get your legal permission to talk to you in a group this morning? As you know, normal doctor visits are private, but we're going to talk in a group this morning. Is that okay? Yes. All right. Thank you. Welcome. Um, so now imagine instead of the usual theories of obesity, the kinds of things you've heard maybe thought about yourself, instead let's say that at the creation of heaven and earth, we're sitting there with God and he's explaining how he created all of us. And he says, by the way, I've created a system so you'll know just how much to eat. It's a hormone, it comes out of your stomach, it goes up three times a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and it's called? Gorilla. exactly. So then, if the hunger hormone drives how much you eat, then if the hormone is off, if it's out of balance, you may eat too much. Every time you sit down, instead of being in perfect balance, say a thin person, you know that person you really don't like, your friend, <laughs> you know, you go to dinner with her and she picks out a salad and then just stops. Right? Well, that person um, probably isn't better than you, probably isn't a nicer person than you, isn't any more intelligent, have a nicer mother or anything like that. She or he just has a better balance in that hunger hormone called ghrelin or ghrelin. Okay? Now, it turns out that that's a pretty simplistic explanation. It works pretty well. It turns out it's probably a little bit more complicated than that. There's actually another hormone we found, and it's called peptide YY336. I didn't name it. Peptide YY336 is kind of the opposite of ghrelin or ghrelin. Peptide YY is released not from the stomach, but from the lower end of the small intestine. And it goes up when food hits it. And when it goes up, you say, ah, I'm done. And I push myself away from the table. The medical term for that, feeling of, oh, that was great, I'm done, is called satiety. You're satiated. I'm full. Okay? So now there's a hormone inside of you called peptide YY, and when the food gets there, you put out enough peptide YY so that you say, I'm done and I'm full. Now again, imagine that that's out of balance. So instead of saying, oh, I'm done and I'm full, instead of being satiated at the end of a meal, you have less of that hormone, well, then you overeat. 